Hello, I'm your host, Alex Friedberg. Thank you so much for joining me today. We will be talking about how I manage my time working roughly around 60 hours per week. And I get a lot of comments and messages basically asking that question, like how do I manage my time with a full-time job and all the other things I do, as well as having a family, three kids and a wife. How do I do that? And a lot of people who are asking that usually are in pretty similar situations and they'll watch uh, you know, one of my videos and they're like, I have three kids and a wife and a full-time job. And I have no time to do anything else. So, you know, what what do you do? How does that work? And so I usually try to give them, um, you know, some pointers or some tips on some things that I do that might help them. And that's what this video really is for. At the end of it, hopefully by the end of it, you'll think, you know, here are some actionable things or some things that Alex did that I could implement as well to help utilize my time. That's kind of what you might be able to get out of this video. So I have a lot of things we're going to talk about. I have a, I have a new setup today. Usually I look like down here for my uh, my laptop because I do notes on the shows. But today it's down over here. So I might be it might feel weird uh, me looking over here today. But I'm going to break down exactly where my time goes um, in rough estimates. Again, sometimes it's less than 60 hours. Sometimes it's more. Um, but roughly around 60 is pretty accurate. It's a pretty average work week or not even a work week, just a week, because some of these things I can't do during the week, I do them only on the weekends. Um, so I'm just gonna kick it right off the bat. I'm gonna kind of break down where my time goes and then um, we'll go into a lot of other things. So let's start it off. Um, how is my time broken up? Well, I have a 40 uh, hour job per week that is a full-time job. So that I have is pretty standard. I think a lot of people have that. Um, on top of that, I do about 10 hours per week on YouTube. Um, and that encompasses a lot of different things, right? It's making a video like what I'm doing right now. It's editing a video. It's replying to comments. It's doing some SEO on my videos, um, which is search engine optimization. That's also updating my website, um, responding to various messages that I get. Um, that is, that's for the YouTube channel, right? If they message me on Instagram or LinkedIn or Twitter, or they comment, like all those things, they take time to respond to. And I do spend a lot of time re responding to those, about 10 hours for, for everything, for all that stuff. Um, I do about, I do consulting, so I have a side business that I do where I consult with companies um, for analytics, either um, products that they're trying to create um, or things that they're trying to market, and I help them with that. Um, so I do some consulting on the side, and I also do um, my mentorship program. A lot of you guys know that I do my mentorship, um, and again, that takes time. So that's about five hours a week. Um, so that's where my time goes. So we have 40 hours for a job, 10 hours on YouTube, that's 50 hours, five hours on consulting, five hours on mentorship, that's 60. Uh, again, it very much varies week to week. Uh, sometimes I don't have a lot of consulting, sometimes I do. Sometimes I don't have a lot of mentorship, sometimes I do. It, again, uh, roughly around 60 hours. Now, on top of that, I have three kids. I have a two-year-old, I have a three-year-old, and I have a nine-year-old who's about to turn 10, um, and the three and the two just turned three and two. So um, that's a lot of things. And when I break it down like that, when I was typing up all my notes for this, I was thinking, wow, I actually do do a lot of things. Uh, it doesn't always seem like I do a lot because um, I do have some free time, and I do get plenty of time in with my kids. But when I break it down like that, it does seem like a lot of work. Um, and so we're going to get into that just a little bit. Now, to preface everything that we're about to go into, I used to be really bad at managing my time. Like just, you know, just think typical college student who procrastinates and doesn't really try hard. Like I, just, I, I was just your typical kid out of college, right? Um, I was pretty lazy, watched a lot of Netflix gamed a lot. Um, I played a lot of like, you know, games on Xbox. So a lot of just various games. I used to spend a lot of time doing that. And so that was one of the biggest things was was cutting that out. And we'll get to that in a little bit. The other thing was, I just didn't, I didn't manage my time well. It just slipped away, right? It'd be like two hours here, two hours there. It would just get away from me and I wouldn't do anything. Part of doing the things that I do is managing that time. That's the first thing we're going to talk about, which is managing my time and actually putting an hour or putting a, a task to the hour has become really important to me. Uh, and usually I do that in a few different ways. So I do have calendars 
Uh, I have two separate calendars. I have a work calendar. I have a, uh, I have a, like a YouTube calendar basically. And I usually have to sync those up. So if I have work, I can't do YouTube and I have YouTube, I can't do work, but work kind of takes precedence. So I always have to be syncing those up and making sure I'm not double booking myself because that would be terrible. And that has happened, um, which is terrible. But, you know, making sure I know where my time is going is is very crucial. Um, and let me see. The biggest thing about having a calendar is that I know where my time is being spent. I'm not just on my phone scrolling, which sometimes I do mostly when I get like messages on places and then I'm like, oh, I'm already on LinkedIn. Let me see what's going on for like five minutes. But the problem is that five minutes quickly turns into an hour and I have to set a lot of reminders for myself to do certain things. Like if I know I have to post a video every Tuesday, which I've done for a long time, I have to record Thursday, Friday, or Saturday to be able to get the editing done and all that, those things. So I have reminders on my phones to be sure to do that. And I have reminders on my calendar to block time off at night to do that. So reminders and making sure you have a calendar um, really, really, really helped me a lot. Um, that would that would probably be one of the bigger things. Um, the next thing is getting rid of distractions. And I laugh because, um, again, I used to be the, the I used to have so many distractions. I, I genuinely love watching Netflix. I love watching Amazon Prime videos uh, or movies with my wife. And I like surfing the web and like gaming. A lot of those things offer almost no value to creating something long-term. It's very short-term, right? I watch a movie, I'm satisfied for that moment, and then I, maybe I talk about it one time in the future. But it does not really build anything. And so getting rid of those distractions was really, really important. So in order to get rid of those distractions, what did I do? Well, the first thing was I got rid of my Xbox, which was somewhat devastating at the time. Um, and I remember, I, I remember this is maybe like five years ago. I was like, is this, is this helping me in any way? Like, is this really worth it? Like, am I getting to where I need to go? Is this hindering me? And it genuinely was hindering me for me personally, because I was, I game too much. And so I kind of went cold turkey. I was just like, I'm done. I'm done gaming. I'm not going to do it anymore. So I went cold turkey. I got rid of it. Um, and then, you know, I used to play some games on my computer as well. I, I got rid of them. And I purposely spent that time that I would be gaming or doing Netflix or anything at the end of the night. And I started studying and I started, um, I, if many of you guys have seen my story, you know, I used to study three or four hours every single night of SQL and Tableau and all these things every single night for like months. And, and, and it took, and then that's how I got my first job. And it took that kind of sacrifice that getting rid of those distractions, those things that I really loved and enjoyed, um, it took getting rid of those things for me to be able to make the time to do it. And that was a big excuse for me for a long time. I, I genuinely kept saying to myself, well, I just I don't have the time. I don't want to do it. Um, and it was really tough to get rid of it at first. But then I kind of became addicted to studying. Uh, not addicted. It just became part of my routine. It became a habit where instead of getting in, you know, invested in all these shows and all these different things, now I'm becoming invested in studying and furthering my career and my future. And now, you know, now that I've been doing this for five years, I find time to watch shows um, and to game a little bit like on my phone every so often. But it's probably about a tenth to a twentieth as much as I used to. I mean, I used to game and watch Netflix a lot. It's a lot of time spent. Um, so managing my time, um, again, it, I, I just say getting rid of distractions is a big one. So having a calendar, making sure I know where my time is being spent is very important. The second one is getting rid of the distractions to make sure that I'm not, you know, seeping into those hours, which they add up. It, you know, an hour a day is seven hours a week lost. Two hours a day is 14 hours a week lost. And and my my viewpoint on these things have changed the farther I've come. Because at the beginning, I was like, it's only an hour. Like it's only an hour a day, but you know, that hour sometimes leaks into two hours or three hours. And so getting rid of those distractions has really helped me manage my time. Um, 
The next thing I will say is setting expectations. So I have, again, I have three kids and I have a wife and I need to be able to spend time with them. And I'm also working from home, which is super tough when you have two kids that live and are always at home and a wife who, you know, sometimes needs help with the kids or wants to go do something when the kids are at grandma's or something. So setting expectations, um, not just with my wife, but with my kids as well, has been one, very tough, but two, super important. And it was kind of a, a growing process, right? Because at the beginning, I would set expectations, but I would break them myself. I would say, I'm going to go spend two hours working. And then an hour in, I'd be like, oh, I hear the kids crying. Let me go help. I've really had to, and I've had to have several conversations because that was a me problem. That was not my wife problem. My wife can handle the kids crying. It was me who couldn't handle the kids crying. I wanted to go help. But I had to set that expectation with my wife and say, hey, when the kids are crying, you know, I used to come. I'm not going to, I'm going to try to do that a lot less because when I get distracted like that, it's hard for me to come back. When I go out there and then the kids know I'm there, they want me there. So setting that expectation with, with my wife is really, really, it was really, really important. Excuse me. And then setting the expectation with my kids as well, because it's a three and a two-year-old. I mean, they don't really uh, understand setting boundaries or <laughs> setting expectations at all. You know, we, we, there's like on like a kid level, you can explain it to them, but not on like an adult level. And so I'm just saying, hey, you know, when I go in here, I have to work. I have to, I, you know, that's how I pay for this house, you know, and that's how I pay for our food is I go in there and I work. And when I'm in there, my wife will have to be on the same page, right? Because if my wife is like, oh, it's okay, just let them in. And I'm, and I'm like, it, it ruins everything. So again, setting boundaries and setting expectations for my time and say, this is really important. Like I, what I'm trying to build here and what I'm trying to grow here is really important and I need you to respect that time. And that's, I can imagine that being very difficult for a lot of people. Because a lot of people, it's very tough to set those boundaries. So, you know, I would think about if I were you and, you know, that's something that you struggle with. I would really think about if it's you, which again, it has been me, or if it's the other person. And try to be very specific when you're setting that expectation or boundaries with that person, if, if you even need to do that, you may live, live by yourself and then that's not a problem. But for me, you know, part of the ex setting expectations was for myself and part of it was, was for my wife uh, and my kids, right? Um, so setting expectations. Uh, and let's see, the next one is being intentional with my time. Now, this one is probably one of the hardest ones to do, at least for me. Because my mind is always going. It's always thinking and doing things. And I, I, I'm i always thinking of like a LinkedIn post and I have to write it in my notes. Um, I'm always thinking of like a different video idea and I write it in my notes. Lately, I've had to, especially in the past like year, I've had to be very intentional with my time because as my YouTube channel has grown, my time has become much more limited slash not important, but you know, I've had to really say no to things, say yes to things, compartmentalize. And so when I was with my kids playing with them, I would be thinking about all these different things. And then when I was working and doing all these different things, I was thinking about my kids. And so I've had to be really intentional with my time and kind of turn off my phone when I'm working or not turn off my phone, but, but kind of turn it over and just say, this is my time to work. This is when I'm getting this stuff done. And if I don't, when am I going to get it done? It's going to push other things. And so when I when it's time to work, I have to be extremely intentional with my time. It used to be when I when I had all the time in the world, I just didn't get it done because I would procrastinate. I would just wouldn't get it done because I had too much time. And now I have so little time. I have to be. I it's it's forced me into a situation where I have to be intentional with my time. And so then when I'm with the kids. I have to be intentional with my time because I spend so much time working. I have to be intentional with my time spent with them. I can't be on my phone. I can't be responding to tweets or, or direct messages on Instagram or all these other things. I can't do that because my time is very precious with them as well and with my wife. So I set aside specific time, especially with my wife, that we can spend at the end of the night before I start working, before she goes to bed, that we can spend together. 
whether it's 30 minutes or an hour, sometimes you can even get an hour and a half in where we're just talking or watching a TV show or just relaxing, right? Being very intentional. That is our time. So I'm not doing anything else. That is our time. And so um, being intentional with my time has, has become easier with the l- less time that I have because it's forced me to be intentional. Otherwise, my job goes, I start you know, spending too much time with my kids, I lose my job. I start spending too much time with my kids, I stop posting videos. Um, I start spending too much time working and my kids hate me. Uh, and so it's this very delicate balance and again, just being very intentional. Um, and let's see, let's see. That, 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 is, that really sums it up in a nutshell. Um, we're, you know, we're only 16 minutes in. That really sums it up in a nutshell. And to all the people out there who have a ton of time on their hands and don't feel like they're accomplishing anything, I get it. I really do because that was me for four years, five years uh, in college. I mean, well, it wasn't college for five years. I was in college for four years, but I get it. It's just that you have so much time on your hands. You don't almost don't know what to do with it. You're like, you know, I could, I could study. I could do all these things, but I'll do it later. And then on top of that, when you do start studying, you're like, I don't need to do this now. I don't need to, to get this done at this moment. I can just do it later. And what happens is you start pushing it off and pushing it off and pushing it off. And the habit that you create is pushing it off. That becomes your habit. And that was me for many years. Uh, and so there was kind of that fundamental shift of, and, and it really was when like I got married. I would say that was like the biggest factor of everything. And so I highly recommend getting married. One, it's a beautiful thing. Two, I recommend like, you know, having a goal, having something that you want to accomplish because it forced me to really say, if I want to accomplish that, if I want to get there in my career and with, you know, uh, in a relationship, if I want to get there, I need to buckle down and actually do this. Otherwise, I'm not going to get anywhere. And that's helped me not only with my relationship, my career, but also my YouTube channel. I just have to do it. That is the, that has been the hardest thing for me as I, you know, got older and got out of college. I was like, Hey, everything's on me now. I actually have to do this. And so when I got married, it kind of forced me, I was like, I have to provide for my family. So I have to do this. Right. Um, so yeah. Yeah. That, that's some advice for, for everyone out there who has too much free time. For people who don't have any free time, they have kids, they're in my type similar situation. It really is about sacrificing. It's, it's before when you have nothing, it's about making sure you're using your time wisely um, and not pushing it off and being and procrastinating. When you have too, too few hours and you have a lot of kids and everything, it's about really making sure you make, being intentional about your time and making sacrifices. Because you're going to have to cut something out somewhere. When all your time is taken up, you have to cut something out. For me, it was gaming and Netflix. For you, it might be go to the gym five days a week instead of seven days a week. Uh, you know, stop watching Netflix at the end of the night for three days out of the week. Right? You don't have to go all the way like I did. Um, I really went cold turkey on a lot of stuff. I've got uh, over the years, I've gotten more lenient because now I've gotten into a really good routine. But it might just be for you is being very intentional with your time don't watch Netflix seven days a week, watch it four days a week and spend those other three days studying. And those, those things add up, it, co- it compounds on itself. Um, that would be my biggest advice to all of you. So again, if you're here in the video, you watch the beginning, you watch the after the beginning and then you're here, which is actually probably towards the middle. I usually have a lot of stuff even after this. It's that everybody in some way can do it. It's just finding out how you do it. And so again, if you've watched this whole video, hopefully you got something from that. Um, That is my schedule. So to all those people out there, and there's been too many people who've asked this, it really is that that's it. I have a lot of things that I do and I love doing all of them. That's why I'm not really willing at the moment to give much of that up. Um, I have a lot of things on my plate, but it it really is about all those things I just talked about, managing my time, being intentional, um, you know, getting rid of distractions. Those are the things that's really helped me do all of these things. And having a fantastic wife who's been very supportive um, and, and does a lot of these other things 
right? Uh, that I don't have to do so I can focus on these things because she does a lot of the cooking and the cleaning and the laundry and all these other things that, that I would have to do if she wasn't around. She helps me with those things and she makes my life easier. Uh, and in turn, I make her life easier by, you know, having this job and, and all this stuff. So, you know, shout out to her big time. With that being said, um, this is come to the time in the show where we kind of get off topic a little bit. Um, and I get, I want to give a huge shout out to the sponsor of this video. And that is all of you. You guys are the sponsor of this video. Congratulations. If you want to support the channel, you can check out my Patreon. You can, uh, you know, provide money if you'd like to. Uh, you don't have to. I never force anyone to do that. But if you want to, I appreciate it. You can go on to my store where I have mugs like this one. Uh, and I actually drink out of this all the time. Really great mug. It says, trust me, I'm an analyst. Or, yeah, trust me, I'm an analyst. I have shirts masks, cups, all these things. I'm going to be exp expanding that in the future. Check out alextheanalyst.com. You can get so many free resources. Everything's free there. I don't charge anything. Um, it's all just there for you. It's resources on how to write resumes, interview tips. Um, there's resume templates, courses, free resources, and free courses. All those things are on there. So I just pushed you there so that you can look at all that and benefit from it. That is all that was. Uh, and that's it. That's the sponsor. I appreciate you guys. I really do. That's why I do all of this. And, and I just want you to know that you guys are what makes this happen. I would not do, well, you know, I probably would do it if I had like, just like a thousand people who watched, um, uh, you know, every week, a month. I'd still do it because I really enjoy it. But since there's more people, I like doing it even more because you guys are fantastic and you guys comment and, and I feel like I know you guys. And so you guys are what makes this channel happen, especially these Alex the Analyst episodes. So I, I like I like to imagine, in my head at least, we're sharing a cup of, because I'm drinking tea, but we're sharing a cup of coffee and you're on your way to work or you're at work and you're, you just got me in your ear and you're just listening or you're, you're playing it on your phone. You're just listening. That's what I like to imagine. It's a beautiful thing. We're just enjoying coffee together, just having a chat about life uh, and how Tough it is to manage time. Uh, the next part is one of my personal favorites before we get to um, the vegetable of the week, which always comes at the end. It's the question of the week. And this one is in reference to my very last video, uh, uh, the things I hate about being a data analyst, which um, I've had a lot of good feedback from. A lot of people really resonated with what I said. And this person uh, particular is a, it's a particular question about something that I mentioned in that video. So haven't, if you haven't seen that video, things I hate about being a data analyst, go check it out. Um, again, it, it, it's really from the heart and it's really true. Um, there are things I don't like. And um, this person kind of talks about that a little bit. And so the, the question is, he says, so is it a bad career path for someone who despises meetings? Uh, and that's in reference to me saying I get very drained from being in meetings. That's something I hate about being in data. lots of meetings. So he says, so is it a bad career path for someone who despises meetings? I've been working in a job for about a year where I had one 30-minute scrum call a day. And even that ended up being unmanageable for me. And the scope creep was enough to give me nightmare, to give me nightmares. And I've quit the job without another one in hand. Can you recommend a job profile and which does not have the requirement to sit in meetings for too long. Now, um, I am not a therapist. I am not a counselor. Um, my wife is. So I have just a little bit of, of say in the matter. But generally from what I read, this sounds like some type of uh, social anxiety. And I would not categorize myself as somebody who has a social anxiety. I just get drained. I'm more of an introvert. The way you've categorized it is that 30-minute meetings have become unmanageable, just daily meetings. Um, and to me, that sounds like either anxiety or some type of social um, anxiety. This might be the same thing. Again, I'm not a professional, but my advice is to seek out a professional. It, it, it genuinely, I, I'm more, I'm more like, hey, I know, I, I understand what you mean, but that's a kind of like almost another level, right? It's, it's a, it's very much uh, this overwhelming feeling during meetings and even short meetings, like 30 minutes as a short meeting. Um. 
I would recommend just talking to somebody about that, getting some professional perspective on your situation, because that might be something that you can work on and get better at. I will say that, and your question is, is it a bad career path for someone who despises meetings? Yeah, it really is. If you can't take a 30-minute meeting, it's going to be really tough. I mean, there are days where I have like six, seven hours of meetings, um, and they're broken up, right? It's a 30-minute meeting, 30-minute meeting, hour, 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 30-minute meeting, 30-minute meeting, hour gap somewhere in there. But you have to do it. You can't just not show up for meetings, and you get a lot of meetings. So it's kind of a bad, (laughs) the data world involves meetings. Any career involving data, I can't imagine there won't be meetings. It's just how things are built, how things are structured. Um, You're going to have scrum calls. You're going to have agile methodologies where you're doing sprints and all these things and you need to give updates. And so unless you find a very niche industry that doesn't or or company that doesn't do meetings, you're going to have a lot of meetings. So, you know, again, I don't want to, I'm not going to say, hey, you can't do it because I think you can, I just recommend talking to somebody who can help because there may be other people listening to this and they're the same way. They just can't do meetings. It ter- terrifies them or they get drained and it's unmanageable like you were saying. My recommend is talk, so, talk to a professional. I've talked to a professional in the past. It really helped me with some stuff. And so I recommend you doing it. Um, and, and that's how I'm gonna answer that question. More of a healthcare um <laughs> counselor awareness uh, <laughs> pitch. My my wife works in that field and I, I've seen the really good that she's done and the good that I've gotten myself uh, f- from doing it a few years ago. And so I highly recommend, oh, this is like, that was like six years ago, but I, I, I recommend it. It helps and it's not something to be, um, not something to be embarrassed about. I'd recommend it, definitely. Um, with that being said, we're here at one of my favorite times of the shows, and that's the vegetable of the week. And I have like 20 plus of these episodes now, and I'm running out of vegetables. There are only so many vegetables out there, and some of them are unrecognizable to me. I've never heard of some of these vegetables. I don't intend on doing it, but I have a running list of the ones I've used. Um, and I haven't used this one, or if I have, I did not write it down. And that's my fault, but this is a good vegetable. Something that I cook with all the time, whether it's um, omelets, soups, uh, some sandwiches even. Uh, The vegetable of the week, if you got this far, if you didn't get this far, if you're somehow listening to this and you didn't actually watch the video, do not write this in the comments. But if you got this far in the video and you wanted to improve your life, you wanted to manage your time like I manage my time, which is perfectly. No, that's not true. Um, If you got this far. In the comments below, type in onion, right? From Shrek, the, the layers, right? It's a it's a beautiful vegetable. And there's so many, it's, it's such a visual uh, vegetable. And it also makes you cry. And I'm telling you, the onions that I made, uh, the onions that I cut, my wife was cooking a, it's a soup. I can't remember what type of soup it was. Those things made me cry like a baby. I was weeping. Um, I tried every trick in the book. I put like a wet, wet cloth, wet paper cloth next to it. Um, I, I, that was it, actually. That's the only one I did. I tried the trick. It didn't work. And I was bawling. Like I couldn't open my eyes. I was crying so hard. Um, in like managing time, sometimes I weep like a child. That is my plug. Uh, that is a the true story for the day. Now... You guys have watched enough. You can cut out now. You do not have to keep listening. For, but for the few that are still here, I want to say thank you. Thank you for being here. Thank you for spending your time with me. Uh, the I have analytics on how many people usually get to this part of the video. And it's roughly around 3 to 5%. So after I've done like my main content, it's usually at like 30%, 40%. That's just how videos work, right? Some people click on, they click click off immediately. Some people listen for two minutes, they click off. So the numbers is like 100% at the beginning, quickly goes down to like 90 at like after like five seconds, some people just aren't interested. Then it goes down to like 30% after like the main part of the video. The people who get to usually like the vegetable of the week, it's only like 
10%. And then to get to the very end, to keep persisting, even after I'm like, get out of here, is usually only like three to 5%. So I'm always, it's always really interesting. So for example, if we had a thousand people, it would only be about 30 people who have gotten this far. If I have 10,000 people, it's like 300. My number's wrong on that. I just said those numbers really confidently, uh, but I did not fact check this, this at all. Uh, let me see, if it's 100, it'd be three. So if 1,000, it'd be 30. If it's 10,000, it'd be 300. That's right. My math is sound. I should never have questioned myself. Uh, and so I always like, it's always really interesting to me, some people who are in the comments and will talk about something at the very end, because I'm like, that's one of those 3%. That's one of like the very few people who stick around this far, and I like that. Um, because I'm usually a person who sticks around to the end. I'm usually that person. If I really like like a YouTube channel, and shout out to one, uh, it's called Good Mythical Morning. I've been watching them for like six years. And I, and I still to this day almost watch every episode. Usually in my morning as I'm like eating breakfast and my kids have all gone either to school or to daycare or, or, or which is grandma's or out with my wife. I eat breakfast and I start working. During my breakfast morning routine, I wash them almost every day. So uh, I am one of those people when they're done with, when they have that Good Mythical More, which is their second show, I watch that whole thing. Um, I usually spend like 30 minutes watching them almost every morning because I just, uh, I've been watching them for so long. I feel like I have a connection with them. That's usually who I think like these people, you, not these people, you people are, who are people who have like a connection with me and enjoy my content much like I do Good Mythical Morning. So if you watch that show, Put it in the put it in the uh, comments. I'll know you both watch my show, and you like Good Mythical Morning, which would just make my day because I I have like T-shirts. I don't have all the paraphernalia, but I have a T-shirt and I have stickers, stuff that my wife bought me, right? Um, and so those are the people that I'm like. I know that you guys are just there's some people out there who who. Are one, they forgot to to exit out. They're like working out. They don't feel like pushing the button to get rid of me. Or two, you like really like the show, which again, if you're this far, that means a lot. Uh, and I say that almost every episode because I genuinely mean it. Uh, you guys are pretty awesome. What's something I can show you that's special? Um, this is a snake plant. This was the first plant that my wife ever bought me for the show, or the first thing that my wife has ever bought me ever, I'm just kidding, but for the show, she bought that snake plant for me. And fun fact about the snake plant, snake plants are apparently one of the best air purifying plants. Like this thing, if you have like 18 in your house, you don't need like an all oxygen in the world went out. I'm making up completely random numbers. Maybe it's like 30 plants or 100 plants, I don't know. But these plants specifically are crazy good at recycling air. So like as you breathe, they 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 take in that Carbon dioxide, uh, what is it? What do we breathe out? Carbon dioxide? Guys, I am not a biology buff here, okay? So just roll with me. And they spit out oxygen like crazy. This thing's probably like, keeping these all these animals alive, this single plant. It's an amazing plant. And my wife wanted to keep me alive, so she got me. Uh, what else can I show you guys? I just now realized I never took this out of the background. It's a charger for my camera battery. It's extremely embarrassing. Um, and this is a monitor that uh, helps me know if my my kids are asleep. And I, I didn't even mention this in the entire show, but my wife is in Texas this week. I've been with the kids for three, two days now by myself. No help. I had to take off some time from work. And it's day two and I'm doing well. I'm still here. And so I'm I'm I usually haven't had to have have this as much as I used to, but I have to have this now. And so my time has been crazy. I'm I begin, I've, I'm a, I'm literally living in my wife's shoes right now, and it's tough. Although I enjoy it, my kids are fantastic, but they are feisty, uh, especially with each other. They're two and three. My nine year old is in Texas as well, but they're two and three. The ones that are at home. They're feisty, man. So I got to like watch them and keep, keep them off of each other. And so, um, yeah, that's what's going on in my life. Everyone else who clocked off earlier, they didn't know. They didn't know. I'm struggling over here. And no one is here to support me except for you uh, and my wife who texts me every day. But more importantly, you. <laughs> so uh, thank you for being here. 
I really appreciate it. So, um, yeah, let me see. Let me see. Do I got any cool photos to show you? you guys, some, some of you guys are getting like, oh, oh man, I got to post this. I haven't posted this yet. Um, I haven't posted this. I'm going to show you. But I took a Myers-Briggs test uh, the other day. And I have literally been asked to take this test for like over a year by a lot, like hundreds of people. We're like, Alex, what's your personality type? You always say you're an introvert. This is my personality type. I don't fully understand what it means, but I'm going to show you because you might know what it means and you might find it useful. But I might, I'll post this in the next couple of days. But this is my um, personality type. Oh, I N I N F J A. That's what it says. I N F J A dash A. I think the A means like assertive. I really I didn't fully understand it when I took it. I'm not a healthcare professional. Thank goodness. Um, I would benefit nobody. Um, so that's something that nobody else knew about. Let me find, let me say, you know what? Let me find one more. Let me find one more for everybody. You guys deserve it. If you're sticking around this long, I mean, again, this is probably like the one percenters. <clears throat> I'm going to find something good. I don't care what it is. Let me see if it's a picture of me. That'd be great. The last thing I show you is just a picture of me. Give me a second. Give me a second. I'm going to go. You know what? I'm about to go way back in the. Oh, no. Oh, that's cute. That was just me of me and Rosie when we first got her. I'm going way back in the archives, guys. Let me see if I can find something. All right. Give me, hey, look, you held on this long. Are you going to stay with me? You're getting rid of me. Doesn't, it wouldn't, wouldn't bother me. <laughs> All right, guys, I'm about to show you something hilarious. I don't even know you'll be able to see this. I'm going to show you. I once did a photo shoot with a friend um, and he wanted me to be kind of like this commercial businessman. And then um, I was at like a table. That's actually the headshot that I have for my profile. Is that from that thing? It was like five years ago. That is from that photo shoot. It looks very professional. But then at the end, we were just goofing off having fun. And he handed me his gun. Um, it was not loaded. I checked. Um, and he had me do some like James Bond poses. And that is what I'm about to show you. And so I'm going to now come around to the camera. Make sure you can see this. So if you're not looking at your thing, I, I'd, I'd recommend it. <laughs> for the for like the five people still out there watching you just got to see a photo that literally nobody else outside of my wife has ever seen um there's no reason i didn't show it um it was very fun it was very fun to do but n almost nobody has ever seen that um and so i am just rewarding you for sticking around for no other reason than i just enjoy your company and i feel like you are the kind of person that I can show that to. I didn't show it earlier in the episode for good reasons. Because all the people who earlier, they wouldn't have understood. But I know you get it. So, um, yeah, with that being said, I'm done. I'm out of here. So, I guess I'll see you. I mean, I, I'm not doing these every week. I'm trying to do them about once a month. But I have so many. I have uh, somebody asked me the other day or somebody commented on my video. And he was like, I knew you were going to do that, that type of video. You're running out of content. Um, it was on my things I hate about being a data analyst. They're like, you're running out of content. Believe it or not, I have almost two years of content already written out. I plan ahead almost two months, my content written out, like fully scripted everything. So I have, I have like eight videos ahead of this one already fully scripted out, ready to, I could shoot it tonight if I wanted to. I don't, I usually do one a week. I, I could genuinely do that. I have two years of content. I have my entire Power BI that I'm going to do the whole Python series that I'm going to do. Then I'm going to go back, do intermediate and advanced in um, Tableau, Power BI, Excel, Python, all those things. Um, that is like in and of itself is like 80 videos, which I do one a week. That's over a year of content just with tutorials. Then I have a ton of other things. Sneak peek coming up. I'm going to be doing what is a database versus what is a data warehouse versus a data lake. You guys are getting all sorts of things here. You guys are getting, this is a gold mine. 
Jeez, this is probably the best after the show, just jibber jabber that I've ever had. You guys are getting like insights that nobody else has ever had. Um, but one of my upcoming videos, yeah, it's, it's data, data base versus data warehouse versus data lake. I'm going to try to provide some visuals. Um, I'm more of a, I'm more of a visual person, but when I make videos, I just like to talk. It's a lot of work, um, to add the visuals and I'm so bad at editing. I'm like genuinely terrible at editing. Um, so I do like the bare minimum, which is very lazy of me. But if you look at like Luke Browse's videos, that man spends like two weeks on a video because they are fun. Not his, the quality is probably like a hundred times better than mine. The quality, the quality over quantity. I provide the quantity. He provides the quality. Um, so yeah, I just, I don't do a lot of editing. So I'll try, I will try to provide visualizations for that. Uh, but that is one of my upcoming videos. Again, I can, I mean, I can go look right now. Let's see what some of my upcoming videos are. Video, what's my video lineup? I plan out my next eight videos. Things I hate about being a data analyst, just did that one. How I manage my time, I just recorded this one. Um, Power BI tutorial lesson one, that is the next week's video. Um, that's gonna be how to install it, how to set it up, what the different things are before we actually get into the tutorials and then we'll have a project at the end, right? Just like how we did uh, Tableau. What is a database versus a data warehouse versus a data lake? SQL versus no SQL, and then Power BI tutorial lesson two. You just got my whole lineup for the next several weeks. I'm not just, I'm not running out of content here. I have so many things we have not talked about. I mean, it is absurd how many things you would not believe are data related that are genuinely good things to talk about on the channel that I'm like, people need to know this. Do you know what SQL is versus no SQL? I do. I think it's important for you to know as well because you might work at a company that uses no SQL. Um, again, Things that you probably, a lot of people don't think about or don't even care about because they've never heard of it, but once you know about it, it's important. Um, and that's important. I'm, I Again, I try to provide value. I try to provide my content needs to be valuable to people, otherwise why put it out? Like this one, at the beginning of the video is valuable. Now it's just gibberish. Um, again, we're running long. It, it, I've, I've given you so much in the ending of this video, I can't even describe how much I've given. Um, usually you just get garbage. Not garbage, just conversation. Today you're getting, you're getting something. I mean, kudos to you for sticking around. But with that, I am done. So uh, let me sign off. Thank you for coming. If you are at this point, I, I'm not even gonna ask you to subscribe because I already know that you're subscribed. I, I can already tell that if you got this far, now I'm doing a lot of things with my hands. I can already tell, <laughs> I'm, I'm looking at myself in the, I look ridiculous. I can already tell that you, <laughs> okay, this is gonna be the weirdest ending to a video ever. I can already tell that if you're watching this still, you're already subscribed, I'm not even gonna ask. But what I do ask is for you to go put onions in the description and then comment on something I've said at the end of this to let me know that you made it this far. All right. Bye guys. Take it easy. I'll see you in a couple of weeks. Uh, I will miss you. I'm not skipping an episode. I'm just gonna be doing one of my regular episodes where it's not as fun. Uh, it's just learning instructional. This is, this is content. This is real content. All right, guys, I'm out of here. Take it easy and goodbye.